Greetings and welcome to Smartwatch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web at smartwatchticks.com and today we're celebrating the first Android smartwatch to appear after the big breakout of the coronavirus in China. Things are starting to resume to normalcy over there and to prove it, we've got a brand new Lympho smartwatch in here. This is the Lympho LEM12. You're all familiar with the 8, the 9, the 10, the 11. We'll talk about those in an upcoming video in comparison with this one. But for right now, we want to show you what you can pick up today at a very, very attractive price because... Lympho themselves on their AliExpress store is offering a really significant discount. A price of about $120 usually runs between $140 to $160-ish. And uh, yeah, right now, well, I don't have a coupon for you during this sale, but you're not going to beat that price anyway. So check the show notes for a link over to the AliExpress Lympho store if you'd like to buy from there. Also, keep your eye on Banggood because we also have them sponsoring this particular watch. They're currently listed at 160. I will try to get you a coupon on that one and get that price down as well. And then you can just kind of see which place uh, you prefer to choose from. But it's exactly the same watch, the Lympho LEM12 with a brown band or black band. There's a couple of different versions that you can pick it up in. As far as Android watches go, it pretty much is basic and similar to all the others we've seen. There's a few nuances, we'll talk about them, but it's a 4G uh, phone, which means that it has a SIM card slot. You can put a standard phone SIM in it. If it's on the GSM network in the USA, that's AT&T or T-Mobile, and you can get uh, phone calling and texting from it. It has three gigabytes of RAM, that's uh, the operating area for all of your apps, and 32 gigabytes of storage inside, um, with a 1.6 inch, 400 by 400 resolution, high definition, full round screen. Okay, and that is impressive. It, the screen differences are about the only thing we're seeing in many of these smartwatches that run the Android 7.1.1 operating system because all the innards are really, really close. You got a 900 milliamp hour battery and check it out. We haven't unboxed it yet, but a 900 milliamp portable charging treasure. I love the languaging here. Um, you'll see that in a second. Ceramic bezel, leather strap, and of course it's got the face unlock feature that we've seen uh, introduced recently on all of these flagship smartwatches. So here's your specs. Yep, I'm still using paper, gang. One of the last ones on the planet. <laughs> there you go. That's everything that's in it. And you can freeze frame it if you want to look at it in closer detail. Let's get into the box. As we unbox it, we find... We've got a charging wire right here. That is your magnetic coupled charging wire. There you go. And it's pretty darn strong. You can actually hold the watch with it. Check out the back of this. Look at that really nice carbon fiber design. There's a little cover you can see over the heart rate diode area. You want to take that off when you get yours. And of course, we've got a cover on the front. Um, speaker nice big size speaker on this side two buttons and a camera on this side and a camera at the top facing forward let's go ahead and take off the protective cover as well and continue unboxing to find there you go this really special charging dock wow all right now if Stretching back your imagination, if you remember the Lympho LEM9, it had a really big one of these things that actually stood up on a table and you could hang the watch over it. This is about a third of that size, but it's the same battery in here as in here, 900 milliamp hours. So what you do is you just mate them together. It lights up because it's been charged and it transfers that charge into the watch so that you can on the fly, give a boost to the watch. Yep, we've seen that in the Genesis. If you watch the review of the uh, Kronos uh, Blade Genesis watch, 
Um, it's a different kind that you can actually wear on your arm, but it also has a, a booster in it. And so now we've got that here. So really, you could either use this wire to charge the thing up, which you might want to do at home. And in the office, you might want to have this thing connected to the wall with a standard USB um, connector here and just keep this thing charged up. And then when you uh, take a break, just slap it onto here. If you still have this plugged in, of course, you're just going to be charging the watch. But if you take this wherever you need to go and you're running low on uh, power in the watch, you can boost it from this little dock. This is optional. You can buy it with or without this configuration. So check when you're making your purchase on whether you're selecting it with the uh, power bank uh, or not. You got a screwdriver, a couple of extra screws for taking off the cover on the SIM. And if you've watched our videos before, you, you know that I'm more impressed in terms of the water retention capability, resistance capability, when you have a SIM cover that you have to unscrew. I mean, you really don't take it out often um, when you put a SIM in here. So the ones that you can just lift up with your fingernail and you might get in kind of funky, gives a place for water to come in. So something like this is sealed really nicely. Now there is a little hole right there that may be an air pressure equalizer for the speaker so that if you're in different air pressure areas, you don't lose a lot of the sound volume. That was a problem with some of these. So not sure about water retention through there. The uh, IP ratings are really loose on these. I would not recommend dunking it underwater, but it's looking really good in terms of not getting as much sweat on these part parts here because of the way it's designed when it's on your arm it's not likely to be touching as much of your sweaty wrist as others have been and this whole section is raised above there and then that's even a little bit lower still so really good uh, overall back design on this and it doesn't look like it's going to crack and break very easily at all you have removable bands, obviously, with the quick release, so you can put in on any band you want. I believe it's 22 millimeter. Looks like it is. That should be in our specs. And then in the box, we've got the little manual. Operating guidelines. Give you a chance to freeze that quickly. And Chinese on this side. And then the overall manual, which is all in Chinese here. And... Are we in English here? Okay, halfway through maybe. Let's see. Here we go. User's manual for smartwatch. This is really a basic manual. Um, not fancy colored pictures or anything. It's been whipped together. Um, there's a SIM card installation and the power charger unit. Here's a bit of information uh, about the menus on the watch, how to change and install your watch faces. If you've watched any of our more recent Android watch reviews, they are all the same. So the manual could give you a little bit of help, but uh, mostly if you want to know more, just keep watching this review or switch over to one of the others because we cover all this stuff every single time. We're going to whip through it today, though, and kind of get you guys on your way, because I really want to focus on an upcoming video, which will be our comparison video between uh, this LEM-12 and some of the others that we've got that are very, very similar. But for now, we're going to press and hold the button to turn it on. And as it's booting up, we'll clear out the area a little bit for you. You get the Lympho uh, logo on the screen. And of course, they all have a startup sound that they emit when they begin. And this one's no different. You can see the bezel itself has uh, etchings around the side every five minutes. It's a full, there you go. It's a full screen display. So it's edge to edge, which for a long time, if you followed us, we've had trouble with watches that profess to be big screens, but it turned out that the image was really small and a big black border around it. Well, as you can see here, now that the watch face is up, it really truly is an edge to edge display. So for those of you who are new and those who like a refresher, 
general operation of these Android smartwatches is uh, moving with your finger. If you slide down, you get into a display that shows you basically if you're Bluetooth connected to your phone or if you have a SIM card in, what your level is. Are you in 3 or 4G and how many bars have you got? Date and time are all here. And that big blue circle is your remaining power. Slide over and you get to a page where you have different icons. This looks different between different watches, but it's pretty much the same. This is your brightness level. And uh, you can tell here's full brightness. Here's low brightness. Now this is sweet. You've got a great range. This is so dim you can barely see it, but it's perfect for nighttime or going to the theater once the theaters reopen in your country. Um, middle is right there, which is a good, nice zone to run it in. And if you're going to go outdoors, you can brighten it up really bright to help you see it outside. So without installing anything else, you've got three nice ranges here. GPS is... Um, Tog you can toggle that here to turn on the GPS module. I recommend you keep it off if you want to save battery um, on this one. Uh, you have cellular data if you have the SIM card in here. And airplane mode that turns on or off all the radios for when you fly, when the airplanes start flying again. Um, this is your twist your wrist to see the time right here. And you can toggle that on and off. Bluetooth on or off and Wi-Fi on or off. I do have this on Wi-Fi already been checking it out and so that's why you see the certain things that are lit up right here now come over here you've got the cleanup button come over one more and you get into weather oh I'm sorry you get into music you have a music player on board and then you get the weather now it basically shows you the weather in your area and it's showing you in centigrade Fahrenheit and an overall icon picture of what the weather's like. Kind of stormy outside here right now. So those are the pains that you go through when you slide down from the watch face. When you slide up, you get into your overall fitness. Haven't used it yet, so I don't have any charts, but you get a bar graph of your daily workout on a month, uh, on a weekly schedule, your step count, distance traveled, and calories burned, all simply based on the pedometer inside the watch. When you slide to the right, you'll get a notification panel. Now, when you're tethered to the app on your phone called the Why Watch 2 app, and you do that right off the bat when you first turn it on, we have a video up talking all about how you connect to that app and how the app works. So watch that one if you want more information. That's where your notifications will show up. And then when you scroll to the left, you get into what's called the app drawer, and these are all of the stock apps we'll go through in a second. And if you slide over one more time, you get the fitness um, options in here. Now, a little word about the fitness. When you get into the fitness, this is the old version of the fitness app that's in this watch right now. It can be, and we hope will be, updated through firmware, but this is not tied in with GPS. So any running or walking outdoors is going to be giving you your distance from the pedometer steps, not from the GPS, and you won't be seeing a GPS track. That's a bit of a drawback, and we hope to see them update the firmware uh, which should be easy to do. We've seen that happen on other watches, and it'll be fully compliant with uh, GPS technology for all of the fitness action. You have your overall contacts, phone, and messaging, which ties to the SIM card. There's no Bluetooth calling in this one or any Android uh, 7 watches. Um, that's just locked out. You have to go way back to the early generations for the ability to talk through your phone SIM on the watch, you know, answering a phone call, coming to your phone with your watch. You can't do that with these Android watches uh, and this one included. After that, you get into your basic overall settings, which includes sound and display, your app list style, which here you can have either an arc or round. Some of them have bubble displays. This one's not one of them. Um, your connection for Wi-Fi and all that stuff your overall uh, gestures for uh, raising your, uh, turning your wrist to see the time, to light it up. And you can turn on and off pedometer if you don't want to use up battery off for that and you don't really ever track your step count. You got some power saving stuff, language, all these things are in here. And then when you get into more, 
This is where you have some other options, including your screen lock settings, which you have to set with a pattern, and then face lock, where you can actually trigger this front camera to recognize your face and unlock the watch on your arm. So that's that feature, and it's built into here too. And all these other things that you see are typical of all of the Android 7 watches, and we've covered these in different videos. Um, pretty extensively. And then about the watch drops you in here where you can see that this is the model LEM 12 version 7.1.1 and the build number and the kernel version are the things that you look for to, um, to tell what version of this app uh, or, or the software, the firmware that you have actually installed. When it gets updated, it'll be a more recent date, and that hopefully will bring the, the feature of the GPS integration to the watch as well. So only a couple of more things I want to show you, but we're going to go through those as we walk through these. Uh, you have a basic browser and download section. Your basic calendar is in here. Uh, the clock is where you can have uh, your clock uh, alarms are in, uh, in that section, and you can have stopwatch and stuff like that and then the camera and the, the camera is switchable between the one that's on the side over here and the one that's on the front here's my cameo hi everybody i'm mr Tix, and it's a pretty sharp looking picture but i got some interesting news for you now take a good look at how sharp that it seems to be and how sharp that seems to be and i'm going to show you something i've shot some pictures earlier of um, this is the towels hanging in the in the kitchen here and what I want to show you one thing is that it does support pinch and zoom which is where you can use two fingers to zoom incredibly close on these images or you can double tap oh no you can't okay I guess you have to pinch and zoom well what I want to show you when you single tap it and you go here look at the size it says it's 480 by 640 you know, it's kind of dim. I'm going to take a moment and increase the brightness to make this whole section a little easier to see. There we go. 480 by 640, which is really, really small. So it's not two 5 megapixel cameras on here. Um, this front facing one is much, much lower uh, resolution. But when you looked at me looking at myself here on the screen, it was nice and sharp. So you got a trade off. The front facing camera is low resolution, but if you're primarily using it for face um, chatting uh, or doing a video log or something like that, it's perfectly fine. But your side camera, and that's this one here, if I get details, you see, it's 2448 by 3264. When you multiply that out, I think you get 8 megapixels, which means it's an up interpolated resolution of a standard 5 megapixel camera, because they really don't have 8 megapixel modules yet. In other words, cutting through the tech stuff, this is a, a good camera, as good as you're going to get on a, a, a watch uh, at this point in time. And this is a very low resolution camera, which is adequate for doing um, face recognition stuff. But if you try to capture that cute picture and then blow it up and print it out, it's not going to be very sharp at all because the overall resolution is like old TV, you know, 480 by 640 uh, is super small. Uh, so in the literature, if it talks about two 5 megapixel cameras, that's not correct, at least on the version of this watch that I have here right now. So that's camera and uh, gallery that we both looked at. Music player, sound recorder, um, your overall file manager is here. Here's the heart rate monitor. You activate that, should get the green diode thing going. Uh, you simply have that covered. You can do it with your finger or ideally you'll do it on your wrist, right? And you'll have it there and you should get a uh, reasonable heart rate. Uh, we aren't checking the uh, accuracy of these anymore. They're just so different, each and every one of them. Um, you pretty much just have to check it for yourself to see if it's right on or high or low and compare it with uh, other ways that you take your heart rate. Uh, so the caveat is you get a heart rate and it may or may not be accurate. Just 
keep that in mind. Notice I took my finger off and it stopped, which is great. It should not be able to um, just read thin air, um, which is uh, a, a nice benefit that you're not going to get erroneous readings on the watch. Okay, fitness we talked about, your overall weather. Um, you have a voice search, which is the Google thing. Um, and you can put the uh, Google Assistant on here and enhance the way the watch works with the Assistant giving you that in-context uh, capability. Like if you ask for directions or something, and you know how it works. Anyway, you, you can use Google Assistant, but you have to install that. That's the basic, basic one. And the Play Store is where you install this stuff. That's your regular Google Play Store, just like on your phone. Google Maps. An assistant, which is not Google Assistant, but this is the assistant tied to tethering. So you can do all these different functions, including sending files between your phone and your watch using um, the uh, Y Watch 2 app installed on your phone and tethered by Bluetooth to the watch. A basic app store, which is different than the Play Store, but it's got like versions of... Uh, Oh, I don't know, Facebook and WhatsApp and stuff like that that you can install. System optimization is a quick and easy way to get to some of the stuff that's buried deeper in the system uh, settings area. Um, just a little faster access to some of that stuff. And of course, now with the face unlock, you can just like go into that right away if you have it all set up and you can disable it or enable it. If you disable it, it'll ask you to put in your passcode. By the way, if you use one of those, you know, past patterns or something and you forget it, uh, you're really going to be out of luck. You'll probably have to flash the firmware all over to this thing to get it unlocked. So don't forget your passcode process of getting in. But you can turn on and off the face unlock or disable it completely. And that's pretty much it. Uh, basic uh, Android 711 smartwatch. Two cameras, one front-facing, one side-facing, which is like all the others on the market except the Genesis that had the, the, the camera. The side camera has been moved up here pointing outward, and the front-facing camera, I think, is over here. Anyway, they like to play with the, the, the camera orientation and perspective. We will take a look at that shortly when we compare it to the Cospet Prime, which uses about the same screen technology as the uh, LEM 12 and as I mentioned the Genesis which is a smaller screen front camera and forward facing camera here so the upcoming video will compare the LEM 12 with both of those so hope you're a subscriber in the meantime if you like this particular one and you want to pick it up at a really good price you're in a window right now uh, where you'll get it for uh, $119.99 by using the link in the show notes. If you're outside that window and it's already expired, well, check the show notes. We should be able to get you somewhere in this range. Uh, it'll definitely be no more than $160, but we'll try to have coupons for you for this one. And of course, you can also buy it directly from Banggood because uh, they're going to be um, providing this watch as well. And again, check the show notes for a coupon on that one. There you go. You've been watching Smart Watch Ticks. We're a YouTube channel on the web. And uh, last thing we'll do is show you the stock watch faces that are here. If you have any questions and if you want more information, be sure to check in the comments uh, area down below the video. Um, and also check the show notes because the show notes is where we give you a lot of information of different things that you can find um, as uh, we learn about them, different resources you can go to, including our Android smartwatch G drive with lots of fun apps you can download too. So all that's clickable in the show notes for this YouTube video. And again, the comments is an area where you guys can talk to each other and us here about uh, things like the updated firmware and other little nuances you find relative to the watch. Wow, that's a nice one. Look at the sharp detail on that. Interesting. These are all stock watches. I have not installed any custom watches on this one yet. So we're seeing a portfolio of new watch faces we haven't seen before. And I'm putting it at the end because some of you got 
jump all over me for all you do is look at the watch faces well <laughs> okay i really like watch faces they're fun um i think that's the last one no nope, we still have more look at this i'm just gonna page through them now wow wow they're really a lot of faces on this one there that really shows the edge to edge of this it it truly is right from pixel to pixel all the way to the edge uh, no uh, black barrier on it at all oh yeah you're right i haven't put it on yet okay nice leather strap easy buckle and these go right in there and that's what you got that's what it looks like speakers right here gonna hear it there easy yeah two buttons this one just kind of takes you back and this one of course you know this you can press and hold and you get this page and that's the thing you can touch to turn it from a circle to a square so third-party apps will appear within a square so if you got a menu thing you need to touch you'll be able to see it otherwise it might be completely off the screen recent tasks is where you get into the things that you've looked at before and you can either go to them or just clear them or clear all and get rid of everything uh, that's always a good practice to do and a couple more watch faces i think a couple wow <laughs> i don't think i've seen this is an interesting one i don't think i've seen this many watch faces stock on a watch for a long time so if you're into watch faces well they just go on and on okay wow I, this is one that i've installed i guess i did play around with this one this is to check to see um if you've got the the touch capabilities this is one of alrod's watch faces there you go and you see you do when you touch these buttons you're able to um go directly to different apps if the uh, watch has been programmed for that and then it also supports drinking beer uh no no it, it, it supports active animations which is also another one of al rod's uh, watch faces here cool i guess i did play around with it more than i thought all right that's enough for now thank you guys for watching once again bang goods got them and limfo themselves has it available for you on their corporate store on aliexpress and we'll see you back here soon for a closer comparison with their peer flagships on the market the cost pet prime and the chronos blade genesis thanks for watching